We did three days on compound angle formulas and um, two equations each day. Uh, but unfortunately, we're running out of time in this unit, so we have to do all three of the of the ratios today. So we're doing five more equations today. It's not actually because we're running out of time, but we're doing we're doing five new equations today, or formulas. And um, we did the compound angle formulas when it's like a plus b, so you're adding two things. These are called double angle formulas. Okay, it's interesting. So sine 2 theta equals 2 sine theta. Of course, doesn't this have to be true? This is true in other areas of math, right? So it has to be true, right? I heard a conversation over here. No, you disagree. You don't think it's true. How would you prove that? Or how did you show that? Go ahead, on. Okay, so hold on. So stop right there. That's fantastic. What Do you remember what value you punched in? Yeah, 15, which is weird for like angles, like radian angles, but why not, right? Plug 15 in, or maybe it was pi by 12 that you did, I don't know, but plug 15 in, try it on one side, try it on the left side. If you are disproving an identity or a formula or something, all it takes is one place for it not to be true for us to be able to say this is not true, right? That's absolutely all it takes is one example. Um, I'll show you even better though. What about this? If this has to be true, um, could I, could I do this? Hold on. Couldn't I do this? I could do, so, uh, sine of pi by four. Okay. Right. Oh, it's frozen. Sine of pi by four. So this would be equal to sine of, um, one over four times pi. Yes. Okay with this? which is equal to one over four times the sine of pi. Do we believe that to be true? What's sine of pi by four? We know that. One over root two. What's sine of pi? Zero? Not the same. Right, not the same. And that doesn't make any sense to take part of an angle out and stick it out in front? That doesn't make any sense. Um, okay, how else can we think of this as not being true? What is, what if I split these up into two different graphs? Y equals two sine theta. What graph is that? What are the transformations? Remember on that day where we did the activities, what are the transformations happening here? That is vertical stretch two. Vertical stretch by a factor of two. So this is sine. We go up. I'm going to do this kind of quickly, so hopefully it's good enough. Yep, that's not bad. Very nice. So that's my y equals two sine theta. What's y equals sine two theta? What kind of a transformation is that? I don't Horizontal compression. So this is going to look something like this, like that. Huh? Oh, yes, thank you. Yep, very good, very good. Do that again. Right. So this is, again, the, the, the big deal about this course and something that we don't think about or you haven't thought about until now. But if I have a formula or an equation. Remember when you used to solve linear equations back in um, back in grade nine? So it was like 2x minus 5 equals 5x plus 10. You might solve something like that, right? Learn how to solve those kinds of equations. I can think of this as one uh, function, that'd be a straight line, and another function on a graph. Like you can always take the left side and right side of function of, of an equation and think of them as separate functions. And in this case, this isn't exactly what we're talking about today, but the answer to this would be where those two lines cross would be the answer to that, right? You do a little bit of that maybe in um, grade 10, but, and then if we're talking about identities or we're talking about formulas or something like that, I can think of the left side and the right side as separate functions and the identity is true if it's the same function, the same graph. That means that they would be equal for all values of theta. 
I mean, these two are equal for uh, these two values of theta at zero and at pi, they're equal. So if you were checking on your calculator and you chose pi, you'd be like, hey, yeah, they're equal. I think we're on to something here. So that's why you wouldn't choose a value like that, right? Or you wouldn't choose zero. That would not be a great idea. Um, but you choose some random value, you try a couple of values, you're probably going to get one that's wrong if they're not true. So there's like nothing about this is true. And again, when we did that activity and thought about these things in terms of transformations, this is what we don't do enough of. We think of this as algebra, and algebra is algebra, and graphing is graphing. And there's no overlap. Oh, now we're doing graphing stuff, so we can forget about the algebra. Now we're doing the algebra, we can forget about the graphing. But that's not the point. The point of functions is that they both uh, improve our understanding of the other thing. So these are not true. So let's see if we can figure out what is true. Okay. And like I said, there's five of these. Oh my gosh, we're, gonna, we're about to do five of them. And then we're going to do like two or three big examples. So we got a lot to do. And remember when we first started this, we, um, we, we found the cosine uh, of A minus B from scratch, from that diagram. Right? So we built that one from scratch, but then we used that one to find A plus B, and we used those ones to find the sine versions, and then we used both cosine and sine to find the tan. So like the first one was hard, but after that it, it got a little bit easier, and we could use the things that we already knew about to solve for the other ones. So notice what this says, use the compound angle formulas to determine formulas for double angles. Sine 2 theta, cosine 2 theta, and tan 2 theta is down below. We're going to do that one in a minute. So I want you to see if you can – so I want you to try this. Try something. Write something down, whatever you can come up with. How could you turn the cosine uh, double angle – or we're doing sine, so sine double angle formula. How could you use that to figure out sine 2 theta? Try something. Think of something. See what you can come up with. Okay, so some people are a little bit confused. I know it's I know it's tricky to come up with something from nothing. What what am I trying to do? I'm trying to use sine of a plus b equals that formula. I'm trying to use it, but to come up with sine two theta. So what can I make my a and my b to give me two theta? Theta plus theta. Are A and B allowed to be the same thing? One's A and one's B. Sure. You can make them whatever you want. So if I say sine 
2 theta equals sine of theta plus theta. Isn't that sine 2 theta? Okay, now I want you to try to expand that. So when I expand this formula, I get sine theta cos theta plus cos theta sine theta, which is 2 sine theta cos theta. That looks like a formula to me. Very nice. What about cos 2 theta? Can you do the same thing? Yes. Basically the same thing, right? Okay, go. Go ahead and do it. Okay, most people got this far. What can I do here? Some people make a little error back, the, um, back in grade uh, 9 when you're first learning about algebra. Well, you learn about it a bit in elementary school, but when you learn about algebra, you get x plus x and x times x confused, right? In grade 9, so x plus x is 2x, but x times x is x squared. So this is the same thing. So this isn't 2 cos, it's cos squared. Right, cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. Oh, that's weird. It's one. Interesting. It's one. So every cos two theta is going to be one. No, this is the one. This is the Pythagorean identity. That's cos squared theta plus sine squared theta. It's, it's similar, but a little bit different. So not one. Not one. Be careful of that. Not one. But that sure looks like a formula to me. But the interesting thing about this one is sometimes uh, is we, we can actually use Pythagorean identity to um, change this, put it in a bit of a different form, and sometimes that might be a little bit easier to use, save us some steps in an identity, or one of the questions we're going to do later on, it's going to be useful for that. So what could I do, like how could I manipulate this a little bit further if I wanted to? Mm, that would only give me – that wouldn't give me plus though because it would turn one into a net positive, but it would turn the other back to a negative. So that would be like sine squared theta minus cos squared theta. You could move stuff to the other side. It's not what we're going to do. You, that would give you like a formula for cos squared theta or something like that. Usually that's not going to be helpful because of the way the angles work. Okay, hold on, hold on. So what I can do is I can, I'm going to do it this way. I can replace cos squared theta with 1 minus 
sine squared theta, which is basically what you were saying, very good. And then, in this case, I don't really need the brackets. I can just drop the brackets, and I get one minus, like you said, two sine squared <coughs> theta. And that's as good as that one's gonna get. Or couldn't I have done it the other way? Cos squared theta minus one minus cos squared theta. So replace the sine squared theta. And when I now I have to distribute the one th the negative one through. So I'm gonna get cos squared theta plus cos squared theta. So I'm gonna get two cos squared theta minus one. So this is why we have five of these is because there's three different ones for cos. And we kind of need them all. If you're doing identities, you can just use one of them and then do extra steps to get the rest of it if you like you can get away with that. But in some of the stuff we're doing today, we need different ones. Okay. Okay, now go ahead and do tan. Okay, so I got this far, <coughs> just plugging into the formula, adding the two on top. This is like x plus x, which is 2x. So it's 2 tan theta over 1 minus, and x times x is x squared, so tan squared theta. And there is your formula. Okay, so five of them. We need to know them all as best as we can. Any questions about that? All right, let's try a few examples here. So this question is like a math class kind of question. It doesn't really have a lot of value necessarily. So it's a good thinking question. It makes us think about things in a bit of a different way. We've actually seen something very similar to it before, but it's one of those ones that you need to try a few times to make sure you understand what information it's giving you, how it's giving it to you, and then what it's asking you to do. And really it's it's just, it's practice using the formulas, memorizing them, using them, and, and a couple other little details. And like I said, you've seen something similar to this before. So it's not too bad, not super interesting either, but it's fine for practice. Well, so what is this telling me? Not sure? Okay, so my angle is between pi and 3 pi by 2. Where's that? Huh? Yeah, up to 270 starting at, like what quadrant in other words are we in here? We're in quadrant three, so that's going to be important a little bit later. If this question didn't give me the quadrant, uh, then, you know, I'd have to do a little bit more thinking or, or I'd have to do it twice kind of thing. But, okay. What, uh, what else is it giving me? So it's giving me the value of sine. I could do shift sine two over five. 
and then and then do pi plus that to get to figure out what the angle. That's not what we want to do. We're doing exact value stuff here. That would be rounded. If you did shift sine of 2 over 5, it's going to give you a nasty decimal. So... Yeah, but we don't know the angle. But we don't have enough. You're right. But we don't have enough to put into the formula yet. So this is a Sir Kix or Tix kind of problem. We need to use Sir Kix or Tix to get a little bit more information and then we can solve it. So in terms of Sir Kix or Tix, what is this telling me? Sine is Y over R, so it's giving me Y which is the negative two, it's giving me R, which is the five. And how do I figure out X? Um, if R squared equals X squared plus Y squared. Yeah, Pythagorean theorem. And I'm gonna flip it around because I already have R squared, so it's gonna be the square root of five squared minus negative two squared, yes? which equals the square root of 25 minus 4, which is the square root of 21. But this is where the quadrant comes in. I'm in quadrant 3, and x is going to be negative in quadrant 3. If it didn't tell me the quadrant, I'd have to consider both the negative and the positive, which would be a pain. So this is negative, negative, negative root 21. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to write out the sign. Well, we already know that one, but I'm going to write it out again just for fun. And then cosine is x over r, so it's negative root 21 over r, which is 5. And then tangent is sine over cos or y over x. So tan theta. We don't actually even need tan theta, but you might because you could be asked to do tan. So tan theta. Uh, is positive because it's going to be a negative or, over a negative. So it's going to be 2 over root 21. It's not a bad idea to just go through that process. Find y, find r, find x, and then uh, write out all three of the ratios to make sure you have them. And then we go ahead and do what it asked us to do. And the first thing that it asked us to do was find, well, we're going to find sine first. So find sine 2 theta. What's the formula for that? Isaac? And so it gave us sine theta. <coughs> but we used to kick, kick, so now we also know cos theta. Like we have a value for it. I don't even know what theta is. But I know what cos theta is. So I can just sub right in. Sine theta was negative 2 over 5. Cos theta was negative root 21 over 5. And then you just multiply it out. Two negatives makes positive. 2 times 2 is 4. So 4 root 21. Oh, by the way, if, tw if 21, if you could reduce that, you would be required to. When we found it, if you could reduce it, I would reduce it. And 5 times 5 is 25. And again, if you could reduce this, you would. Otherwise, we're done. Okay. What about cos 2 theta? Well, we have three formulas to choose from. Doesn't matter which one you use. Let's start with the first one. Cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. I think some people might think one is easier than the other. And that's fine if you think that. Use the same one every time so you get used to it. Or use different ones so you memorize them all. I don't know. Remember, cos squared theta is, what do you mean? Why do you need to know all of them? Yeah. You'll see in the next example, for sure. Um, but sometimes when you're doing an identity, it's easier, like if you want them all in terms of sign, then just use the sign one. Right. Instead of using the cos squared theta minus sine squared theta, because then you'd have to plug in for the Pythagorean identity anyway. So in, in terms of identities, which we'll start tomorrow, it'll <coughs> save you a step or two. But in terms of the examples we're about to do, we need we need them. So could you do this question without using the one cos theta? You could do this one. Yeah, not sine, but you yes. could theta. You could, absolutely. Is cos theta is x over r, right? Cosine is x over r, yes. So 
Wait, would that make it 5 over square root of 21? No, x was tw the square root of 20, square root of 21. r was 5. Oh. Cos squared theta is like cos theta all squared. So this is negative root 21 over 5 all squared minus uh, negative 2 over 5 all squared. What is negative root 21 over 5 all squared? Brad? Thank you. 21 over 25, positive 21. Root 21 squared is 21, right? Um, and what is negative 2 over 5 all squared? Well, that's 4 over 25. And 21 minus 4 is 17 over 25. What if I chose to use one of the other ones? Cos 2 theta. What if I used 1 minus 2 sine squared theta? Uh, you can write this down or not. I'm going to do it quickly. That would be equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared theta was the one we were given. So this is like what you're asking. We don't even need it for this one. Negative 2 over 5 all squared, which is 1 minus 2 times 4 over 25, uh, which is 1 minus 8 over 25, which is 25 over 25 minus 8 over 25. 25 minus 8? 17 over 25, same thing. I hope so. I hope so. There you go. If you have tons of extra time on a test, that's how you could check your answer. You could do it all three ways. Actually, it's interesting. Um, this morning when I was doing this, and I'll do it with you too. Um, I'll try to do it again. I've never done this before, and I got halfway into it, and I realized... I've never done this before. I hope this is going to work. If this doesn't work, this is going to kind of be uh, embarrassing or like, whoops, I guess that's not true or something. But um, it did work. Heads up. Oh, what am I doing here? i got to unfreeze it here. Okay. So this is from the first example. I could check these on my cat. Go with me on this. I'm, not, I'm actually not going to recommend that you necessarily try to do this. Some of you might find it interesting. So I'm, I'm just going to do it quickly. But you could check it. But it requires some real work. That's why I was like halfway in. I'm like, well, this is harder than I thought. Um, I could do shift sine of I now I got to do positive two over five, right? Because you always put the you always put the related angle, or you always like put the positive in to get the related angle. So this is the related angle to what I was given. But it, it told us we're in quadrant three. So now I got to go to quadrant three. So I do pi plus that. So there's my quadrant three angle. I mean, it's just a nasty decimal business, right? But there it is. Um, and now I can do sine of two times that. So there's sine two theta. And then if I do minus um, bracket four root 21 divided by 25, and this is where I was like, boy, I hope this works. You better get zero. And it did work, so there you go. But it's a little bit trickier than uh, the other kinds of things that you could that you can check with your calculator. But anyway, there it is. It does work. You could do it. Um, but I don't know. You might be taking your life in your own hands by trying. So any questions about that before we move on to the next one? That's one of the kinds of questions. This is the other kind of question. This one to me is a little bit more interesting. As you're writing that down, I hope you can follow me. Not much to write there, so hopefully you can. So far up until this point, we were able to calculate the exact value of the following angles. Zero, uh, pi by two, pi, three pi by two, and two pi, right? We could also do pi by six, pi by four, pi by three, right? Special triangles. And then we also learned how to do just recently all the pi by 12s and all the multiples of pi by 12s, all the multiples of the pi by sixes, pi by fours, pi by threes, and the ones above. Like those are all just <coughs> multiples of each other. So we can find all of those and all the multiples of those. So now we're adding pi by eights. We can find the exact value of pi by eights as well, okay? Um, because it's fun and it's something to do and it's Thursday and we didn't have anything else to do today. So, 
Uh, what's the formula for sine of 2 theta? <coughs> Didn't we just do this? Who remembers what it is? 2 cos theta sine theta. 2 sine theta cos theta. Very good. Thank you. Now, don't use that formula. <laughs> don't use. I'm glad you remembered it. Don't use that formula. Pound my fist on the desk. Don't use that formula. And then on the test, some of you are going to use that formula. It seems counterintuitive that we wouldn't use the formula to sign to calculate things for sign. But if you, but after we do an example, you are going to look back and you can figure out why. Or if you, if you can't figure out why, ask me and I'll show you why. But just trust me, you cannot use this formula. It will not work. So which formula are we going to use? Well, the other one that we have. So what is the formula for cos 2 theta? What's the next one? One minus two sine squared theta, right. So because the question asked for sine of three pi by eight, we're use, we always use the cos 2 theta version, and we're using the one with sine in it. Now, off to the side, if theta is 3 <coughs> pi by 8, what is 2 theta? I multiplied the left side by 2, so I multiply the right side by 2. So that's going to be 6 pi by 8. Which is da, 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 3 pi by 4, which is something we know something about. And that is going to be helpful to us. Okay, so you always have to think about that off to the side or something. You can write it down. You can show it like that. Theta is the one you're given. And then 2 theta is one you're going to calculate by multiplying it by 2 and canceling and putting it in a version that we like. <coughs> And then I'm going to sub both in. So I get cos of 2 theta, which is 3 pi by 4, is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared of 3 pi by 8, because that's theta. Can that be a 2 No. Oh, oh. Could you also do this with the graph, since it's pi over 4? What do you mean? Uh, so you could find the area, or you could find the area between uh, pi and uh, two, uh, pi over two, and would that be the same? I'm not sure I follow you, but it's possible that you could do it that way. Yes, it's possible. I mean, it's gonna kind of just always be the same thing over four, right? So there's not a lot to it. But or do you mean like solve the whole question another way? Yeah, I'll see if I get the answer. Yeah, let's let's talk about that again. Let's pick that up again after. Let's get this done so people, so we know this process at least. So now what do I do though? Because I don't want cos of three pi by four. Actually, we know cos of three pi by four, and that's not what we're trying to find. What is cos of three pi by four? It's always like the question gets sprung on you. You weren't expecting it, and this that's an easy one. But all of a sudden, bang. Negative 1 over root 2. So why not evaluate that? We're going to need to anyway. Okay. Equals 1 minus 2 sine. And this is, don't forget, sine of 3 pi by 8 all squared. That's what that means. What do I do? How do I solve for sine of 3 pi by 8? <coughs> I just take all the junk and throw it on the other side? I'm just going to isolate for 3 pi by 8. So I got a 1 in the way. Let's put it on the other side. So negative 1 over root 2 minus 1 equals negative 2 times sine squared 3 pi by 8. And we just keep going. Divide both sides by negative 2. I'm going to do something a little tricky here. I'm going to factor, uh, the, I'm going to factor a negative 1 out of the top. That doesn't always happen. But in this case, it's going to be helpful. Because what happens now? Yeah, the negatives are gone. 
And this is equal to, what am I left with? Sine squared 3 pi by 8. And now what can I do? <coughs> Come on, you guys should be able to see this. Take square root. Heard somebody say it. Take the square root of both sides. So I get the square root of 1 over root 2 plus 1 all over 2 is equal to the sine of 3 pi by 8, which is what we were trying to find. So now I have an expression, like now I have that isolated, and it's equal to this expression. Now that expression is not in a form we like, so we're going to reduce it. But otherwise, we're, you know, that would be kind of done. The only thing we're missing is what happens when we take the square root in a, in a question like this? Could be plus or minus, couldn't it? Except, what do we know about 3 pi by 8? It's in the first quadrant, so it can't be plus or minus. Which one is it? Plus. plus. So, so you have to write plus or minus and then crossing out it's inadmissible. Because of quadrant one. Because it's in quadrant one. Sometimes you'll see people say like, this is in quadrant run, therefore positive. Like you actually see people write it out, but I'm okay if you do it like this. But say inadmissible quadrant, quadrant one. Whew. Okay, so I'm going to flip this around and start simplifying. Sine of 3 pi by 8 is equal to the square root of 1 over root 2. And I'm going to change the 1 into root 2 over root 2 all over 2. Okay, which equals... 1 plus root 2 over root 2 all over 2. And that's like 2 over 1. So I'm going to flip and multiply. Uh, square roots inside square roots and fractions inside fractions inside square roots inside square roots and it's kind of a mess and uh, we know how to rationalize denominators so you could even go an extra step with this but we don't right we don't make you do that so that's as far as we can go with that that one's done <coughs> and just like the other ones these ones all look very similar so you get minuses in there in different places and that kind of thing, but they do look similar. And you could check that on your calculator. You could type sine of 3 pi by 8 minus and plug that whole thing in properly. You should get zero. Would you like to see one more or would you like to have the next 10 minutes to practice? 10 minutes of practice. Some of you can practice and the other people can watch one more. If anybody wants to see another one, I'm happy to do another one. This is not the right thing. Your practice is just one, two, three, four from this sheet. <coughs> Say again. Tomorrow, we're, Tomorrow we're doing identities. It's not that bad. Does anybody want to see one more? See, what, see it again? Anybody? Anybody? Okay, then.